if you're an older guy and you're just getting ready to start working out, there's some mistakes that you could make that might torpedo your fitness program. So in this video, we're gonna go over those mistakes, some of those mistakes, so that you might have a better chance of achieving your fitness goals. Stay tuned. All right, let's get this party started. One of the first mistakes we make is not thinking about training our core. Now, you know, if you think about the stability of your body, your core is probably the most overlooked part. You know, we, we train, tend to think about doing things that make big biceps and a big chest. And the big lifts, the deadlifts, the squats, all those lifts are the first things we think about when we're gonna go in, in the gym. But if you're like most older guys that are out of shape, haven't trained for a long time, instead of having a six pack, you might have a keg. And if you have a keg, you probably have some fairly weak abdominal muscles. So when you think about your body in terms of mechanical stability, you know, we'll use the arm for an example. You know, you got an arm, you got a big muscle on both sides of your arm that make it move in and out and a nice solid bone down the middle, very stable, not a lot of weight being moved by this. But if you think about your back, your lower back, this is one of the problem areas that a lot of older guys have is that they have lower back pain. And one of the big reasons for lower back pain is that your lower back is doing all the work because your abs are shot or stretched or just not strong. If you think about the structure of the body, again, you have, for, as far as your lower back and your core is concerned, all there is is that little spine running up through there and you gotta balance this whole upper body and the whole lower body. All that weight is all on that spine and then this group of muscles around her that that's what gives your body stability. So the core is very important and strong abs will very much have an effect on whether or not you have low back pain, particularly when you're doing lifts like deadlifts and things. Now, just a, a couple of quick tips. If you've got a, a protruding belly, it's sometimes it's hard to do things. You think of for how do I train the core? Well, sit-ups, obviously, maybe leg lifts, obviously. But if you've got that belly, it kind of can get in the way of being able to do some of those exercises effectively because you're not going to go through a big enough range of motion. So as a total rank beginner, just getting started, simple things like even leg lifts where you... I'll just give you an example. If you just opposite knee to opposite elbow, even that, and while you're doing that, focus on your abdominals. Make a point of squeezing them, feeling them, get very familiar with when your abdominals are activated when you're working out. And the more you do work out, you'll find that you activate your abdominals in almost every exercise, especially heavy exercises like a squat or a deadlift. Your abdominals are gonna be engaged in there, and the more you are focused on those, the more you get where you have a brain and body connection, the better off you're going to be, the more effective they're going to be. So number one tip, train your core, focus on your core, make it strong. It's going to make the rest of your body work out much more effective. Okay. So the next one we're going to talk about is form. First of all, you should think about working out as practice. You're practicing to get better. There's a correct way to do each lift. There's a correct form for each lift that's gonna be the most beneficial, that's gonna get you the most bang for your buck. If you play golf, then you understand that there's a correct way to swing the club that's gonna get you the most distance, the most uh, accuracy, etc. And it takes practice to get that correct. And you practice forever and you're never gonna be the best possible, but it takes practice. So think about your workouts as practice and then Let's talk about form. Now, I, I can't go through every single exercise that there is and show you proper form in this video, but I'm just gonna give you an example of how it impacts you. So we're gonna do it with a, with a dumbbell curl. So incorrect form, I'm gonna stand sideways here. Incorrect form would be a lot of guys throwing it up here and they end up up here with the dumbbell. And, and what you're doing, if you're up here, you're really working your shoulder, not as much as your bicep. And even the whole momentum 
of throwing it up there takes all the stress off your bicep. So it's not very effective and it's a good way to get an injury. And just to illustrate the importance of form, even the way, if I hold the barbell this, or the dumbbell this way versus this way, it makes a big difference on which muscles it's gonna impact. If you watch my bicep with the dumbbell this way, you can see how it looks, what's engaged there, versus if I turn it this way, completely changes the shape of the bicep because it's activating different muscle groups. This way versus this way. You can see it when I turn there. So form is important. Practice good form. You'll reduce your chances of injury and your, your workouts will be much more effective with good form. So the next mistake is one that almost everybody makes when they start out with a workout program and that's lack of intensity. The intensity has always been a big bugaboo for me because it's very hard to teach someone intensity. We can define intensity in the sense of a workout is, is going through a set of, of reps until you just have nothing left in the tank. You pushed it till there, you're not leaving one more rep in the tank. That's where you've gotten to the intensity. It's when you've crossed over the uncomfortable point beyond where you just started to experience discomfort, which is where a lot of people will just stop. They'll start doing a, a lift and as soon as they feel a little bit of a burn or a little bit of a, they'll, they'll okay, that's enough, I stop. That's, if your goal is to, to build some quality muscle, you have to push your muscles beyond what they're capable of. It's about adapting. Your muscles adapt to a stress that's more than what they're already capable of. So if you can lay back and do some dumbbell presses with 10 or 15 or whatever pound dumbbells and you can do 15 or 20 of those relatively easy and you just start feeling a little bit of lactic acid build up, a little bit of a burn, that's not intense. You want to have, really to boil it down to, there's probably a, a rep range that's most appropriate for building muscle and it's probably between 5 and let's say 12. It's a lower number of reps but the, the most uh, required part of that is that you have to push your muscles to failure or near failure in order to stimulate growth. So intensity is, is a very, it's a very mental thing. It's, the, it's your ability to push yourself beyond the edges of just your, your discomfort. You've got to go deep into the discomfort, not to where you're getting an injury, but where, you're, where you know you're pushing your muscles and there's nothing left in the tank. So mistake number three, not enough intensity. You've got to put in the intensity. Okay, mistake number four, not enough recovery or too much recovery. So when you first start working out, especially if you haven't done it or it's been a long time since you've done it, you're untrained, if you have a good form and you you put in enough intensity, your muscles are gonna get sore. So there's the possibility that you'll just not work out again until the muscle soreness is completely gone, or maybe they'll get so sore that you just say, no, I can't do it anymore. But in any, either case, you do have to allow for adequate recovery. And the older we get, the longer that, that seems to take. So what's a good rule of thumb? Well, one of my favorite workouts is a split where you're working basically half your body one day, the other half your body the next day, and then you're resting at least one day in between those two, maybe two days in between those two, and then start back over at the beginning. And that gives, your, gives each half your body at least two days of recovery time in between workouts. If you, if you take a two-day break in between the the workouts, then you're gonna get three days of recovery time. And that's generally, that's probably gonna be enough for most people. You know, when you first start, it might take a little bit longer. You might give yourself a, a few extra days and then before you start working out again, make sure you stretch and warm up adequately so that your muscles kind of get uh, more comfortable so that you can make sure you're able to put in the intensity to make your next workout effective. So recovery time, it varies from individual to individual, but Make sure you're getting enough recovery because that's when your muscles actually grow. If you just go in and work out every single day over and over again, your muscles, you're going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. So get enough recovery. Okay, so the next one I want to touch on is nutrition. This is a very big subject, but I can't emphasize enough its importance. You know, if you've been, if you're out of shape, overweight, 
whatever you've been eating, whatever your dietary program is, it's probably not benefiting you. And a lot of guys go into their into this workout fitness program thinking, well, as long as I'm lifting enough weights and doing this, I don't need to change my diet. I don't need to change anything over there. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. Weight loss and muscle gain both begin in the kitchen. They, they're both a product of what you're putting in your body because your body needs the fuel to build the muscles along with the stimulation and needs the, the right kind of fuel so it doesn't accumulate more fat and in fact you lose some fat. So I'm going to just boil this down to the simplest possible terms to make because there's all these different diets out there, all these different protocols and dieting, following a protocol like that is, is uh, it's one of those kind of things that everyone almost fails at. They, they're just, there wouldn't be so many of them if there was one that was super successful. So you can just by virtue of the numbers, you can see that they're not successful. So diet is more about your way of life eating, not just some program that you're going to go on for 30 days to lose fat. It's how you're going to eat for the rest of your life to be the healthiest, live the longest, and be the most uh, energetic and active that you can be. So couple of, just a couple of simple tips that everyone can pretty easily follow. Number one, you need to get enough protein. Because if you don't get enough protein, you're not going to build the muscle. And just an easy rule of thumb, and it's, it's actually it's an easy rule to, to understand, but it's difficult to achieve. And that is try and get one gram of protein for every pound of lean body weight that you think you have. In other words, if you think you're 30% body fat, subtract that from your weight and, and then use the result of that subtraction for your how many grams of protein to get in a day. It's a, it's a bit of a challenge to get that much protein, but the older you get, the more protein you need because your body has more and more difficulty assimilating the protein. So it's important to get enough protein. The second thing I want to say is eliminate all processed foods. Real simple, not easy to do. Uh, the particular ones I would say is breads and grain products. If you could eliminate just those, that's bread and pasta and those types of things, you'll see a huge difference in not only how you feel, but the weight coming off your body. Um, and it's because of the way those things have an impact on your insulin. When you eat them, they digest so fast that your body has to react and, and uh, put insulin in your system, which results in fat deposition. So, so just those two things. Get enough protein, eliminate breads and pastas, processed foods if you can do it, and you'll be off to a great start. So number six on the hip parade, sleep. You know, the, as we age, you know, we develop a pattern of, sleep. We get pretty comfortable. In fact, a lot of us don't wake up with an alarm because we're just so ingrained in whatever our pattern of sleep is that we don't need an alarm. We wake up at a certain time every day. We go to bed at a certain time every day. But for a lot of us, those that the distance between those two times is way too short. It's because maybe you stay up to watch the 11 o'clock news and you've got a job that you have to be to by 7 o'clock in the morning. So by the time you actually get to sleep and then turn around, you have to wake up and you got to go to work, you're only getting maybe five hours of sleep in a night. That's usually that's not enough. And it's especially not enough if you're training hard, trying to gain muscle. It's part of the recovery equation. Your body needs to get enough sleep and it needs to get quality sleep. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of information about the blue screen effect right before bed, the things that you can do before you go to bed that will, that will help you get a better night's sleep. And of course, you know, limiting any caffeine intake late in the day, uh, getting off your electronic devices maybe an hour before bed, maybe read a book, something that relaxes your mind before you go to bed. And that'll help you get a little bit better quality sleep. When you do go to sleep, you'll get into that deep sleep, the restorative kind of sleep. And it'll, it'll help you recover from your workouts, it help you gain muscle, and help you feel better. Okay, and the last one on our list is hydration. You know, uh, as we grow older, we get some really bad habits, and one of them is you get up in the morning, chug down a cup of coffee, off to work you go, and you probably have another cup of coffee there. Maybe at lunchtime you have a can of soda with your, with your uh, lunch, 
or a, an energy drink even better. And uh, anyway, you make it all the way to dinner, maybe you have a couple of beers and then that's it. You've not, and it, throughout the whole course of the day, you maybe, if you're lucky, you drank a cup of water. Well, your body is mostly water. So it's a very important part of your health and fitness program is to make sure that you get enough water in your body. There's, there's such a thing as too much water. You, there's actually toxic effects of drinking too much water. So what's a good range? I think a good range for most everyone is to try and drink a couple of liters of water every day. Make it a goal, set it on your desk. I keep a gallon jug on mine, trying to do a gallon every day. It's difficult, but that's what I try to do. So hydration is very important. Make sure you're getting enough water. It's gonna, in fact, maybe just replace some of those things you're doing throughout the day, the cup of coffee, the soda, replace that with water. And that'll help you get up to that two liters a day program. It's gonna make you feel better, it's gonna make you look better, and it's gonna make you perform better. So now let's recap. These seven mistakes, these seven things to avoid, these seven training failures that you might have as you're an older guy just getting into working out. Number one was training your core. Make sure you put some focus on your core because it's gonna help you with low back pain, it's gonna help you with stability, it's gonna help you with all of your bigger lifts. Work your core. Number two is make sure you're using good form. Good form is gonna make all the exercises more effective than if you're just throwing the weight and, it, and it's gonna reduce your chances of injury. Number three was intensity. Make sure you're not leaving somewhere throughout your workout that you're, you're draining the tank. You're working yourself fully, completely out of gas. Number four, recovery. Make sure you give yourself enough time for your body to heal up and come back stronger than it was before the last workout. Number five, nutrition. Simple nutrition tips, get rid of the breads and pastas, try and get rid of the processed foods, eat enough protein. Number six, get enough sleep and get good quality sleep. Make sure you give yourself a little break in the evening right before bed so that your brain can turn off, slow down, and get into a position where you're gonna get a good night's sleep. And number seven, drink some water, lots of water. So I hope you find those things useful, and if you do, please subscribe, please share, and hit the like button, and uh, thanks for watching.